running is a very primordial aspect of the human movement um, um, repertoire, so to say. And uh, when someone starts running, whoever lived their life the way how most people live uh, in big cities and towns in, in our Western civilization, there's a very serious um, steps required, slow, gradual increase of um, exposure to running and not just simply start running one day to another half an hour. This is what most people do. And that always leads to um, um, injuries. Sometimes it's not necessarily physiological injuries, but psychological injuries, which essentially stops people running after a few weeks, maybe a month, two months. So my goal is to make sure that uh, you start nice and gradually and slowly build up um, the capabilities of how long you run at the beginning. Um, that is very good for the foot, strengthening gradually the ligaments and tendons in the foot, since uh, proprioception, meaning the feedback mechanisms from the foot to the brain, um, comes from the muscles in the foot. You have no idea how the ligaments and tendons are conditioned in your foot. So the problem with that is that whenever someone wears shoe, the shoe itself, um, itself changes the way how your foot uh, you know, um, shapes when it hits the ground. Also, it takes away the sensitivity from the bottom of the foot. So um, when you move into one of these five-finger shoes, okay, which I'm going to recommend, I'm going to talk about it in a second. When you move into a five-finger shoe, it suddenly gives a major amount of flexibility uh, to your foot and muscles, ligament, tendons start to really work very hard in your foot. Now, muscles get stronger much faster than ligaments and tendons. So as the muscles getting faster, stronger, since they are giving the feedback mechanism to your brain, what kind of condition um, um, your foot is in, um, suddenly you start to think that, okay, I can do more. But the ligaments and tendons takes about four to seven times longer to get stronger. So since there's a huge imbalance in your foot right now, just like any other person who ever wears shoes throughout their life, uh, which most people in our Western culture, um, when you start to strengthen your foot, there's going to be an imbalance for a while between the muscles, ligaments, and tendons. Now, of course, if you would have lived the way how a human being meant to live, there would be no imbalance. So, of course, um, this wouldn't be not an issue. So, let's start from the beginning. Five-finger shoes. Uh, when someone doesn't have any kind of a competition that they need to prepare for, it is an absolute must to start with these kind of shoes uh, to run. So purchase one of these. Please pay attention. The one that you purchase has a little rubber on the two in the, in a, in a small toe and the second small toe, whatever it's called. Um, there's a tiny rubber uh, stickers on the top and the bottom of it has a striations like this. Okay? Whichever you choose, the one with the laces, or the one with the Velcro, it doesn't really matter. Try them out. It's important not to buy the first batch on a um, first pair of your shoes online because they fit very different than a normal shoe. You always want to set it up that the big toe is the one that uh, fits very well. Rather have a tiny bit of space uh, front of it than having too tight. It's very important. So uh, this is called, by the way, the Vibram Five Finger KSO. Um, and then there are many different uh, type of it. Um, this is the Komodo. There are many different types. This is, for example, the Trek, just as, as, as long as it's KSO. So once you put the shoe on, you go for your first run. There's a few things that you need to um, keep in mind. First of all, a human being, generally talking, um, was made to do a so-called persistence hunt type of running. Persistence hunt, basically, you start running after an animal, and you don't know how long you need to run. You might, uh, the animal might uh, runs out of energy in about three hours, but it might take 10 hours, 12 hours for it to run out of energy. So you cannot ever try to push and, and drain yourself too much. And it's very, very important when you start running, okay? Later on as well, but especially at the beginning. So always keep in mind that if you try to follow something, you would be looking straight forward like this, instead of most people, looking down like so. Every inch you move your head forward that increases the tension in your lower back. Actually one inch increases 10 extra pounds in your lower back. That's how much heavier your head is each, each inch that you move it forward. 
So always keep looking on the horizon. Of course, looking down once in a while so you don't trip, you don't fall, that's fine. But generally talking, try to keep looking forward. Very, very important. Um, keep paying attention how your tongue is. Is it moist? Is it dry? We always want to make sure the back of your tongue stays moist. Okay? Um, that, that is a very nice feedback mechanism that your body has to give you, um, um, letting you know if you're draining yourself too much, if you're running too intensely. Also for the beginning, only nose breathing. Okay, so no mouth breathing, no inhalation or exhalation on your mouth, only a nose breathing. That's an another way to uh, monitor if you're running too intense or not. Um, your elbow position, just make sure you keep your elbows bent, and it's totally fine to cross the midline, this is the midline, cross the midline with your hands, Okay, so you don't need to be straight like this. This is not sprinting. So allow yourself to do this. This is totally fine. How your foot should land. Whenever you wear the five finger shoes, uh, your foot will give the feedback uh, to your brain, letting you know what kind of surface you're running. So your gait is going to actually change. Essentially, a human being, whoever has a perfect structure, will land always on the outside, here first, and then Lens like this, lens like this, lens like this. So a little bit on the outside and then roll. Okay, so it hits and roll. So hits and roll. So it's not really a heel strike. And with these shoes, you will sense it that the heel strike is very uncomfortable. So, but you should not pay attention to that. Your brain will adjust for your current condition the kind of pattern that you require to do right now and what you can. If you start to pay attention too much of a toe hitting right now, you're going to destroy your foot and literally you're going to break the bones in your foot. And I'm not exaggerating. You will have a fracture in your foot if you don't um, listen to your body. So there will be some sort of heel strike, which is going to be a little bit different than what you're used to in a normal running shoe. Um, so I talked about uh, the head position in tongue nose breathing, um, your elbow positioning, arm movement, and the landing. So these are the things that you should pay attention to at the beginning and start simply with one minute running, one minute walking. And at the beginning, just do six segments of it. And if you're fine and you don't feel any muscle ache anymore in your Achilles tendon area, then you can add another segment to it. So seven times and then eight times. And each time you run, just add one more segment. That way you build yourself up um, and then you can step into the next phase, uh, not being a beginner, but starting to get into the next phase of preparation. And I will talk to you more about this after. So I hope this was pretty clear. There's a fair bit of information. Um, listen, to, listen to it over and over. Um, one time listening to this, we're not going to get the job done. So make sure you write little notes for yourself and think about it and listen to it over and over a few times and then it will sink into your mind. So these are the basics for starting running as a human being meant to run. Thank you.